Bible bugs you so much? I think the idea of eternal life, I think the idea that Jesus rose from the dead, I think... Okay, but whoa, 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 whoa. That Jesus rose from the dead was a historical claim. So how is that metaphorical then? Is okay, so tell me what evidence is there? No, 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 no. See, you're trying to get out of it. Well, how did you just decide that testing the historical claim of the resurrection why did you take that historical as a historical narrative rather than metaphorical okay so no no why oh no i'm answering your question because of context can i answer your question please so let's say tomorrow we found out we found the bones of jesus yes i think that's a possibility that that can happen uh, 2,000 years ago, finding bones okay, do you think would it's be a challenge. Everything I don't, possible I don't, I don't, God? How does when the Bible talks about, first of all, I want that verse that you're, that you're referring to. Secondly, just because the Bible says that all things are possible with God, that somehow we have to find Jesus' bones okay, because of that. You, if Christianity were true, would you believe in it? Yeah. Poor little Cliff Jr. Poor little Cliff Jr. So... If you listen to what he's saying, Cliff and Cliff Jr. are always trying to obfuscate. They never want to really deal with the questions that people are asking. And if you listen to them carefully, you can see them mess up their own argument. So the young man is saying that the resurrection is a metaphor in the first part. But he's saying that how did you go from it being a historical claim to a metaphor? Well, you messed up when you said a historical claim because... A claim is not facts. A claim is something that people just decide is without having to have all the evidence in order to prove that it is. He never said it's a historical fact. He said it's a historical claim, meaning that the people claim the resurrection, but there is absolutely no proof of the resurrection. Now, I know this is going to be for Fred on Facebook. Those on Facebook know who Fred is. There were zero eyewitnesses to the resurrection of Jesus. There are zero. Zero. Every one of your biblical narratives were written by anonymous writers. None of them were actual disciples of Jesus, walked with Jesus, knew Jesus, can prove Jesus. They were written by people who wrote decades, if not a century after the so-called Jesus events happened. These are supposedly written by people who knew the apostles. But there is no claim to that. I can claim that I knew, um, that I, I know Dominique Wilkins. Well, actually, I do have met him a couple times. But I can claim that I know him personally. I could claim, and I can tell you his story. But I, don't, I can't tell you his story. I can claim that I knew Michael Jordan. I ain't never met Michael Jordan. Don't know Michael Jordan like that. I can make any claim about knowing somebody. So to write based on what somebody is claiming to have seen, heard, and seen what they did is not facts. It's not proof. And then people are going to run up the poll. Oh, but there's Paul write about 500 eyewitnesses who saw Jesus. Paul is talking about how he heard it from another dude who heard it from somebody else who talked to the 500 witnesses or saw, the five, or saw Jesus. Again telephone game that's not proof that is not proof that's like me talking about i know the habits of dr martin luther king because my pappy used to live across the street from dr king and had neighborly relationship with him but that's about it he, they didn't know know each other he might have seen him on the porch every now and then seen him walking down the street to go to church now and then, but he didn't know the man. So how valid is that claim of anything he could say about Dr. King? He only knows that a little bit, but at least it's somebody that we can prove existed. We got pictures, photographs, writings of Dr. King. We have no writings of Jesus. Not one. That is Jesus. And I love people say, well, the red letters. The red letters is what people claim that he said. We don't have any proof that that's actually what he said. So there is no proof of the biblical Jesus. There were plenty of Messiah types running around claiming to be the Messiah in the early first century, early first century BCE, early first, or early second century, second century BC. You can find it throughout the entire time that the um, Jewish people were under Babylonian captivity and 
uh, Greek captivity and Roman captivity, there was always a Messiah. People claiming it every year, and Pontius Pilate was killing all their asses. All they candy asses. So, no, there's no proof of your biblical Jesus. There is proof, written proof or accounts of people claiming to be the Messiah. Josephus talks about four of them named Yashu. Tacitus is writing about what people believed. Pliny is writing about what people believed, but they're not writing about any eyewitness accounts that they had or anybody they even knew had. So there's no proof of your Jesus. And then to find the bones, to find the bones, and you can say that these are the bones of Jesus, that would actually invalidate the Christian story, which is why I don't understand why he didn't say that, because Jesus supposedly rose, so there would be no bones of Jesus. So that would actually invalidate it. So he missed an opportunity uh, to kind of sort of win the argument there a little bit by saying that Jesus rose, so there would be no bones of Jesus instead of going and saying that, well, because just because the Bible says all things through God can be done, that we can find the bones. But yet we have never found any evidence of any of the disciples. The only evidence you have about a guy, about a guy named Paul are letters that has Paul's name on it. And you can tell seven letters were written by the same author. But how can we prove that it was actually written by a guy named Saul who's, who then converted to being named Paul? You can't prove that either. You can't prove that he was part of a Sanhedrin. There's no records of any of that. So none of these characters because they're literary characters, can be proven to have existed. So the whole thing, if you can't prove, if you're believing in this book, but yet can't prove it, then it's all based on faith. And faith is believing in something without having any proof, which is weird because why would a God who wants us to believe in it not give any proof that it exists, but expects us to believe it? The the, the, if you're making the claim you're God, then it is upon you to validate that you're God to the people that you want to believe in you. And I ain't seen no evidence of this God. People are going to say, well, miracles happen all over the place and unexplained things. There's unexplained things that happen to people who don't even believe in your God, but believe in another God and attribute it to that God. So they can make the same claim. Mysterious things that happen that has no explanation is just the idea of cause and effect. And when we don't have, don't know what the causation of something is, that doesn't mean it's a God. We just don't have the knowledge or the scientific know-how to figure out at this point what it is. Man didn't understand all that rain that was just going on in this video and the other videos. Man didn't understand how rain works. And so they said Yahweh, the storm deity, brought the rain. Now that we know how rain works, no one says that Yahweh, the storm deity, brought the rain. No intelligent person. Only the nun or the unintelligent person says that God made it rain and my crops grew because God provided rain. Y'all the only ones that, and that is so weird that you would believe that. You know what? I got some proof for you, God. I got some proof. Go and try to grow Let's see, what needs a lot of water? Live in Arizona, plant some seeds of some, some St. Augustine grass, which requires way more water than Arizona ever receives in a year. Like it needs, all the water that Arizona receives in a year, all the rain it receives in a year, is not enough rain to keep St. Augustine grass. You need Florida kind of rain. Plant some St. Augustine grass. You don't go out there and water it with your water hose. Pray that your God waters that lawn and makes that St. Augustine grass grow. Because I had it and I had to water that shit almost every day. Plant that. Your God makes it rain every day or every other day on your lawn so that you can have that beautiful carpet light St. Augustine grass. Do that. Because he said if you can prove if Christianity is real, would you believe it? That's my challenge to your God. Let's see it happen, buddy. Let's see it happen. So y'all have a great day. And always remember, you have to free yourself to breathe yourself. Because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.